Originally in Spanish, 2019. I know there's no such thing as time, but how do the races coordinate events, meetings with each other, things like that? Time is still semi-linear. That is to say that the most dominant temporal perception is taken as a base. I mean, if we were in terrestrial orbit, the races up here will take as a base the perception of time of the Earth. That is why we observe days of the week and dates. Far away or in planets with high perceptual alteration of time as in Taigeta, or extreme would be Sindrial Aldebaran. It is useless to even try to coordinate with some temporal markers such as a clock. So how people coordinate is almost exclusively by telepathy. There is no other way. One can observe stellar dates as well or the position of the progression of constellations and the stars in them in relation to each other. This serves as a basis as well. On a planet, days and nights are observed and counted as normal. However, within the same days, it is difficult to set hours. The only way to have a time metric basis is by observing the position of the Sun as it started on Earth as well. But this is still limited because the perception of time varies from person to person in Taigeta. And while it is an approximation, observing the position of the Sun, Taigeta Tau 19, cannot calculate a time frame with total precision as on Earth with its minutes and seconds. Can you be precise with telepathy? Wouldn't you say that the watch is more useful? You can coordinate with someone to the minute, to the second. No, because if you take watches to Taigeta and synchronize them, they change and unsynchronize with astonishing speed. They become useless. The entire ship is coordinated to perceive the same time, sit time, because it is the consciousness of the people who make the clocks not work. That's right. To make things more complicated, in places like Sindriel al Jabaran, where a large Taigeta colony is located right now, the position of the sun cannot be determined with any reliability, since Aldebaran, an orange giant, appears so large from the desert surface of Sindriel that it dominates all or most of the sky depending on the time of day. Although it does not roast or burn the planet for other complicated reasons having to do with its radiation frequency and the fact that Aldebaran is immersed in a high-density nebula. In itself, it gets to the point that in Sindriel there is no night. It is only sun or shadow. Another conversation. Followers question. What do you know about the 1000 year time loop? Yes, it is possible, as well as variants of that of greater or lesser length. That is by agreement between groups of people. It is not that time is looping, but that people repeat it in that way, ranging from repeating one life to a whole group of millions of people repeating. This is also because they have bad memory and fall into the same loops and the same dynamics as before. But this is generated by people, not by time itself since time is not something separate from people's consciousness. But what does bad memory have to do with it? Because they fall into the same destructive dynamics. For example, they're already forgetting about the Nazis because the COVID thing is the same as what was happening in Germany in 1938. Exactly the same, but they don't see it. So they go in that direction. Another conversation. Calendars outside Earth. 
What kind of calendar do they use? Does each civilization have its own method of recording history? None. Time cannot really be measured, or only when it is specific to a place contained within a collective unconscious, such as the Earth. Because time is a byproduct of the act of being conscious and thinking. So the perception of time will be specific to each individual or each soul. And the duration of a temporal unit will only appear similar when there are common agreements of perception, as is the case on Earth. Calendars are only a reflection of the perception of the society that created them. So all those time travelers out there are fakes. However, even when they travel in time, they can make a mistake in time duration. Being that, yes, they are true travelers, just that their time frame is wrong. Since when traveling in time, it is done by frequencies and not by dates. However, even when done by frequencies, there is a logical mathematical sequence that can be seen or interpreted as the duration and can be a factor in calculating the most probable duration of the time lapse between origin and destination. Another conversation. A follower's question. What was the Earth's transfer time before the destruction of Tiamat? The data does not exist because time at that time did not work as it does today. It is not something stable. I am talking about the time of orbit around the Sun. That data is human thinking, coming from human science. The star races do not use it. And how did they measure it before? The most accurate way to measure time that includes all the places of this galactic quarter is to measure everything by stellar dates, that is, the position of the stars relative to each other. This is how you can measure the approximate time slip between one planet and another. But even this system remains somewhat approximate and never exact. Another conversation. Swaru, does the moon have anything to do with the Earth's time, i.e. longer or shorter days? It's part of the matrix, because that's where it comes from. Short and long days come from what you are told, from the angle of rotation of the Earth relative to the Sun. Or what did you mean? For example, the days seem to be getting shorter and shorter. They are not 24 hours. Today I looked at an article that said that the days will now be longer, or that will be the perception that we will have. Oh, I misunderstood you. You weren't asking about short days, long nights, but about time speeding up, right? Yes, that. Time as a measurement based on the rotation of the Earth, let's say is the basis of what terrestrial chronometers are. Even on any other planet, that is taken as the basis, because it is something obvious. In that case, the days have been made longer by the moon, strictly speaking, yes. This has occurred since it entered its present position some 12,500 years ago, as we have already said. However, from the more expanded perspective, this has no basis, since time is not a constant. This is the major recurring problem with time for me, and how to describe it from here. On Earth, it is taken for granted that it is a universal constant. Even with a rotation as the basis for the concept of a day, on other planets, 
time passes remarkably differently for everyone. And from our point of view, based on the comparison with our planets, time on Earth has not only not slowed down, as that article suggests, but has accelerated dramatically. We take as a baseline for measurements the year 1985, where for every day on Temer and Era, 2.4 days passed on Earth. Now, the latest measurements from March 2018 are 4.5 days on Earth for every day on Temer and Era. The perception of a day on the surface is the same. That is, if you are on Era, a day will pass for you in the same way as it usually does, with you doing the same amount of things. But on Earth, about 108 hours will have elapsed. The time or duration of time on the planet is not caused by the stars, only as an external influence, but not primarily. It is because of the average perception of time by the consciousnesses within that planet. So on Earth, as it is artificially held within a low frequency, of hopelessness, the feeling is that there is no enough time. So in relation to Temer and Era, it goes very fast, because on our planets things are taken with calm and you live in peace, while on Earth everything is accelerated, everything is done in a rush. Back to the constant. On Earth, all mathematical calculations are based on the premise that time is a universal constant, and it is also the basis for all your errors, mathematical and non-mathematical. For example, in the most famous equation E equals mc square, energy is equal to the mass times the speed of light squared. Therein lies the problem with that equation. The speed of light is based on the distance it travels in one second, or approximately 299,792,458 meters per second. But who dictates the duration of a second? The equation will only apply as energy equals mass times the speed of light squared as valid from within the 3D framework within the Earth's zone of influence and its artificially coordinated time, and cannot be applied outside of 3D. That is, it does not apply outside the planet. This means that the limitations of light speed, of not being able to exceed it, are false and are only matrix. Another conversation, 2022. Today in Temer, what you perceive as a normal day with normal duration as you perceive it on Earth today in terms of duration, is equivalent to almost five days on Earth. That is, you live your day in Temer and at the end of it, almost five days will have passed on Earth. Time is not something like a phenomenon. It is not something tangible, much less a wave or particle. What produces it is consciousness, as something inescapable from itself. That is, you cannot be a person or creature that knows itself to exist, I think therefore I am, without generating a perception of the passage of time, that is, just a progression of your own thoughts and perceptions, and how you process them. The time slip gap between Earth and the other planets in other solar systems happens not only in or with Taigeta, but with virtually all places with planets in the same circumstances 
as those orbiting the star Taigeta. The gap between Taigeta and Earth has widened in the last two years and sharply. That is, the gap has increased enormously since 2020 and worsened in 2021. In 2019, the gap was 4.5 to 1 and now we are already at 4.78 to 1. But also, in this solar system or essentially only in Taigeta, or is it a galactic level or a universal level? Galactic level based on the locations we can measure. It is a much better and more accurate indication of the state of mind of the collective than the Schumann frequency, which, in the most recent experiments conducted by the Toleka, shows that it has little or nothing to do with the average level of consciousness on Earth. In other words, the Schumann resonance going up means absolutely nothing. It used to be thought that it reflected the collective, and many still maintain that, since in collective meditations there has been a measurable extra spike. However, we believe that it is temporary and returns to its usual state after the meditation, as the same people who participate in the meditation return to their usual state of living in fear and determinism. Or it may also be that the measurable peaks in the Schumann resonance are simply coincidental. It is said that the Schumann resonance is like the frequency of the toroid that envelops the Earth and determines its frequency, as in its position with regards to that whole 3D, 4D and 5D thing, although we no longer want to use those terms. While it is a frequency that envelops the Earth, the frequency of the ionosphere, that is Schumann resonance, does not have a full effect on the frequency of the Earth, because it is below and within the strong energetic toroid of the Van Allen bands. It is the frequency of the Van Allen bands that determine the existential frequency of the Earth and not the frequency of the ionosphere. As existential frequency, I would mean the cycles per unit of time of the molecular oscillations that compose the matter on the Earth. Since the time unit part, whatever it is, is relative to the observer and is not a universal constant. Additional comment from Yasky on the topic of existential frequency. I thought existential frequency has to do with consciousness, not matter. Of course it has to do with consciousness, everything does. Remember that we sometimes answer questions from one or another level or point of view. We can answer from the material level or from the astral, but that becomes too incomprehensible for most. Ok, so what exactly is existential frequency? how high you are vibrating. The closer to source, the faster you vibrate. But Athena said, as existential frequency, I would mean the cycles per unit of time of the molecular oscillations that compose the matter on the Earth. Why matter? Isn't existential frequency a state of mind? Correct, but referring to matter only, and from the point of view of Earth. Because anything that has to do with units of time cannot be standardized. Time is always relative to the observer. It is a state of mind. But your state of mind determines the frequency and the vibration of the matter which you are manifesting. Molecular oscillations that compose matter are a measurable scientific way to approach the understanding of the vibration coming from a being with consciousness 
who is manifesting everything. Ah, so by studying the matter of Earth and its oscillations, you can determine the state of mind of the people because it's them who manifested. Yes, it is a mirror, a reflection. Another conversation. Okay, so it is important to say something here. The Earth has and maintains its collective unconscious, which is a creative manifesting force of attention from source. That is, what the collective agrees on, what is and is not real, possible and not possible, will create frequencies, because the thoughts amalgamate with one another because they are all connected, and therefore all reinforce, manifesting a reality according to their beliefs. This creates a soup of frequencies, which is what affects or defines a place or level or existential density. These mental frequencies are a high-frequency gravity flow or concentration of attention from the original source in the form of high gravitational frequencies. This means that just as on Earth, each planet or group of consciousnesses creates a collective, and the collective itself can be seen as another thinking creating entity. So the Earth has its collective unconscious, as does Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Cinderella, Alfrata, Avion, Temer, Erra, or Pitoya. So, as I have explained before, time, the temporal progression that is the animation of events and the speed with which they unfold, is a byproduct directly related and proportional to the collective unconscious that generates it, which explains why there are differences in time slip between the planets, all of them, because consciousness and its perception is different in each of them, since time and consciousness are two sides of the same coin. The perception of time cannot be given without consciousness, and being conscious depends on a temporal perception. Time is not a byproduct of consciousness, it is consciousness itself. Therefore, you modify and control your consciousness, and you modify and control your time. You don't need time machines to travel through time. You don't need spaceships to go from place A, where everyone is running away from, to place B, where everyone wants to go. You just need to control your consciousness. Yes, and the Earth itself projects the way that it is, spherical. Because it so wishes and it so manifests itself, in the same way that I manifest myself to others, are you? Yes, but at the level of consciousness of the Earth, which is the sum of those inside and those outside, it is the result of another soup of collective unconscious among planets, suns, and constellations, which in turn is part of another collective unconscious that is of galactic level. And in turn, the cluster of galaxies will have its collective unconscious, and so on, until it becomes the source itself. So, whether the Earth is round, more like a geode, does not depend so much on what the human collective unconscious imposes within, but depends on its vast majority on the collective unconscious of galactic levels, of which the Earth is a part. So Alcyon has its own, and others have theirs. Yes, exactly. Each place each system will have its frequency that is related to and is also being altered and influenced by its surroundings. As each place has its specific frequency, this can be used and is used 
for stellar navigation with a ship, remembering that a frequency of a particular place is not something fixed, because it is consciousness, so it is a flow of consciousness that varies with the stimulus, thus giving a progression that is perceived as time. Yes, it's clear. That's why the time, the perception of it, is different. Yes, but then does the Earth affect the solar system with its low frequency? And this solar system, the galaxy because of the Earth? In a way, yes. But remembering that the Earth, as well as any other being with consciousness, does not have a fixed frequency and it varies with the stimulus. <laughs> 